In case you guys are wondering <laughs> what's going on. Oh my yeah. gosh. Let's welcome to the breakfast party oh the yeah. honorable Dr. Keith Rowley, leader of the opposition yeah. and political leader. And I'm your DJ for the PM. Right. He's also DJ for this segment. Yeah, he, he just t- Yeah, he chowed raw. Yeah, yeah. He chowed raw. He tell raw. That was on. a lovely song. Hold mm-hmm. on, hold on, hold on. Let me take over. <laughs> welcome. I want to welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dr. Thank Rowley. You. To different settings. Um, he's standing. He yeah. said it's the first time you ever came to do a radio interview and had to stand. Stand. That's the settings here. We do it a little different. So I, I, I thought you all didn't finish finish the room. <laughs> <laughs> we thought so too. When we first, it's like, where did you? Ask? Yeah, when we were doing the renovation, we came to. We were like, uh, they forget something. It was like, no, no, no. This is the new way we do it. This is good for the blood flow, though. Yes. No, uh, no, no sleeping on the job. Yeah, no, no sleeping, sleeping on the job. On the jo- Next thing you know, Doctor Rowley, get rid of all chairs of public so much. <laughs> <laughs> because you know the last thing. Hey, 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 don't, <laughs> even, don't even make that joke. <laughs> They're already telling them that I'm going to get rid of the job. Oh, that's true. Much <laughs> true. Don't talk get rid of nothing. We're not, we don't, get rid, keep that word out of the conversation. Well, We're welcome. not saying get rid. We don't want to bring in more chairs. We're bringing more chairs. <laughs> bring more chairs. <laughs> well, welcome. We are so elated you are here because we know you're very busy. I mean, this is the, you're on the last stretch here. So we really appreciate you getting up early and coming to the breakfast party. Well, this is my second um, studio for the morning. So mm. I was up a little earlier, just about. Five o'clock. Right. Uh, this is a hectic week for you. You have your time balance, like when you have to get up, what to eat, somebody taking care of you? Yeah, I'm mm. taking care of. I have a household of ladies and I have some <laughs> more some more coming in tonight, so I'm not sure it's black. But you see, it's a, a marathon, right? Yes, it's a marathon. You know when you run a marathon, you have to sprint in the end? Mm-hmm. It always amazes me. Yeah. Now I have to do it. Yeah, like kind of mm. Usain Bolt kind of thing. You just start yeah, off yeah, nice you, you and run, then... You run marathon, you run a long, long time, five years you're running and then... The last hundred yards you required to sprint. No sleep. No Going sleep. hard. Well, we mm-hmm. wish you all the best. We're very grateful you're here. Yep. Now, uh, you know our station is very young, urban, and um, we've been asking our callers uh, to send us uh, some messages, what you want Dr. Rowley to, to talk about, what you're interested in. And many people are talking about the economy. I think it affects young, old, etc. And uh, we kind of want to know from you, how are you going? Because we know the problems with the economy. The oil prices are down, uh, kind of shaky, but when it will get better, for us and I think the people of Trinidad and Tobago just want to be uh, feel comfortable knowing that the next leader of the, this great nation is going to be able to diversify the economy into other areas so we're kind of wondering what plans you would have if you had to lead uh, our country next five years in terms of economy. Well the first thing to do, um, what we expect to do is to do the best that's available to us under the circumstances that come our way. Um, some circumstances are beyond our control. Mm-hmm. Some are within our control. The ones that are within our control that we very quickly do the best that has to be done. Government is usually, governing is normally a, a selection of options. There normally isn't one thing that you can do. There usually mm-hmm. are a number of options. It is which option you choose that sets you on either the best, a, a growth part or a part of decline. Currently, we're saying that our options are not um, the best that they could be. But what you want in office are people who will handle the challenges most sensibly, most honestly, and most competently. Right. So right now, there the are change circumstances taking place, even as we speak. And Around just, the world, not just yes, trying yes, to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but we, are, we are locked into the hydrocarbon industry. That's our major export. Mm-hmm. Our major um, earnings come from there. We have serious social problems. We have serious fiscal problems where we are spending a lot more than we're earning. And even as we're doing that, um, we have to keep our eyes on the debt side of things. And they're, you know, so there are, there are, there's, there's work for the government. Challenges. Um, the government is required to keep the ship on an even keel. And we, we want to see fiscal responsibility. We want to see a re- removal of waste. We want to see an elimination of corruption. We want to see opportunities for young people. Because a win, lose, or draw, Monday or Sunday, a country would live on making opportunities available to young people. Because going forward, what you're doing 
is creating opportunities for participation of the population. And that population, which is loosely called young people, they're the ones you get to keep making that space for because you assume that those who are not young have already found their niche and are performing. But the new ones that are coming, you have to have that opportunity. You talk about the economy, <coughs> excuse, and the problems that we foresee and balancing. One of the things very interested in is the gate. Now, in your manifesto, you, you talked about, uh, you know, of course, this was a PNM initiative, and you also talked about valuing education and how valuable it is to the PNM. And uh, but then we talk about because we also know it's very expensive. I'm one of the people that gained a degree from Gate. Many other young people and even older people are going back because of Gate. And I guess their concern is um, because of the economy. Is it realistic to say, well, yes, gate will stay open? Yes, um, we are committed because it's, you, you can't make these commitments and not try to sustain them. Mm -hmm. What gate really is, is an understanding that your investment in the human capital of the country mm -hmm. is paramount. So you, you have to make that sacrifice to develop your people because your people is your strongest resource. And you make the investment to get them trained, qualified, developed. And then to do that, you do it in a way that you make the best of the dollar that's available. You, what you don't want is unnecessaries in there and waste and worse corruption. So mm -hmm. you want to know that even as you're taking the difficult decision to fund it and keep it going, that you are not funding waste and corruption. That's that. But, you're, but we are committed to the program. And if everybody's head is in that direction, well, then um, there shouldn't be a problem. And uh, we, we expect jobs because after all this education, uh, you mm. know, in terms of saturation, because many of the youths coming out now, we want to get the degrees, they want to come out and work. And how are we looking in terms of unemployment? Are we going to well, have the jobs to satisfy this youth well, that is where that's where, that's where the economy comes in. Mm -hmm. well, because back one in. has to understand that, that you're hardly being paid because you want a job. You get paid because you're doing something and what you put out, you get paid for. And when you encourage all this um, preparation, the next step, the, next, the necessary next step is that people need to be um, finding opportunities in the economy. Uh -huh. If the economy is stagnant, means that it's staying where it is, then those who are in position, they have it. And those who want a position can't get it. If the economy is growing, then you create space for new people to come in. So the, the, the government's responsibility is to try to grow the economy, do more, make more opportunities, more space, and then you require more people. Yeah. And then the people you require, hopefully, these are going to be good jobs. The people who are trained and qualified, they will get jobs commensurate with their qualification. Because if people are underemployed, they very quickly become frustrated. Mm -hmm. If you go and use, and we've seen that a lot in the youths now, and and, mm -hmm. and that frustration um, could manifest itself in a variety of ways, and you you need to be satisfied that the effort you put out to prepare yourself to participate in the economy that you come out and benefit, having prepared yourself, and if that benefit is not forthcoming, then well, you believe that the country is failing you. So the growth of the economy is what we're looking at. Unfortunately, in the last. Um, after the downturn, we had you know, the, the international collapse of 2008, mm -hmm. 2009, where the whole world faced it. We too were not insulated from it here. There was some depression in the economy. But then we started to try to fix it. That fix has not effectively taken place because the economy has not grown in any significant way in the last five years. It's been pretty flat with some recession in between. We think that the assignment for the new government is to rectify that which is to try to bring about growth at the earliest time because without that growth, yeah. you will have this challenge of absorbing the young people who are preparing themselves. And, and they're you, prepared. I mean, and you don't want to tell people are. don't prepare because there's mm -hmm. an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And even in difficult circumstances, there are opportunities. So we want to keep on maintaining this um, forward-looking um, arrangement that telling our young people, prepare yourself to participate in the national economy, mm -hmm. to be a contributor to national development, and then... We have to try and keep our part of the bargain, which is to have opportunities for them to move into. Yeah, and I know that's a big part of your manifesto, the youth development, and also giving opportunities to really encourage you to help stimulate the economy. Wherever the opportunities are for 
participation, whether it is in the public sector, the private sector, self-employment, we need to do all of it. Mm-hmm. There's, no, there's no one switch that you flick. There's a whole and the light comes look at on. it. Wherever, I mean, there are new areas of endeavor which need um, to be entered into. Some of it needs support in some areas. Some simply, wants, some, some simply want um, a start and mm-hmm. then they go mm-hmm. and there are areas that we have not exploited like you know, art and culture yeah. and fashion and so on yeah. these are areas where small business micro micro enterprise three or four persons in a room doing a design and next thing you know we can put something on the marketplace and have a label that yeah. can create a thousand jobs yeah. so that's what you have to do and but everything that we can do to contribute we need to do Right? especially when our major contributor is facing the kind of challenges that the hydrocarbon sector is facing now yeah. because that's a cyclical thing it goes up and down now we're looking at a downturn uh, or, or the market is down but we can't just say we wait until it comes back up because if you do that when it comes back up you yeah. have nothing to sell yeah. so you're yeah. going to bear the brunt of the pressure for the downturn so when it turns around you're there, you're to, ready. To, you're there ready. to benefit so it's, the, the management of the country needs an understanding of these things and the positive behavior of the country's managers. All right. So if you're just joining us, we are live on the breakfast party mm-hmm. with the Honorable Dr. Keith mm-hmm. Rowley. And as we say, we're the voice of the youth, that demographic, that 18 to 25. And one of the issues um, for this elections has been corruption. We know it's on the forefront. Everybody's talking about it. A lot of our listeners, our callers, they want to ask uh Dr. Rowley led government, what would you put in place to curb that the perception of people having um the you know they say that um everything is for your friend or your partner, you know, what is uh what would Dr. Rowley a uh, Dr. Rowley led government do to assure the young people that you have things in place to curb or to give the perception that you know everything is above board? Well, the first thing you start with is a selection of people who don't subscribe to the principle that the public um, assets are theirs to do as you see. Mm-hmm. And that public service is not about yourself. It's about the national community's interest. And you are, in fact, just a manager and a trustee. So it's a personal attitude. And you, we, 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 we get that started by selecting through a screening process people who by their record their preparation their behavior would give you the best option to have that outcome that they are in fact the right people to do the job and then you have systems that identify what is right and what is wrong and second and then after that now you have consequences if things go wrong you don't encourage wrongdoing the biggest failure of this government. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an opponent of this government because I'm on the other side of the political divide and you expect me to criticize the government. But I think my criticism is a reasonable one. That is, the, big, the biggest failure of this government is that it has encouraged wrongdoing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, all governments, you have instances, you, you, you can't guarantee what people will do. The human character is such that a person might look honest, but in fact, with the first opportunity, they disappoint you and then you have to act. But this government has encouraged wrongdoing, and that has been a depressant on the national community because it's in your face. You see it. It's not to say you think it's happening or you, you suspect it's happening. We know a lot of it because we've seen it. Unacceptable conduct, a lot of unacceptable ways, a lot of unacceptable corruption, a lot of tailoring things, tailoring things towards wrongdoing, right? That is not acceptable in the management of a country's affairs. Those who manage the country have to make an effort to at least keep their noses clean. Because if, if, you, if I'm going to hold you accountable, I have to be accountable too. And I have to conduct myself in such a way that I could talk to you about your conduct. But if I'm participating in wrongdoing, I can't really genuinely <laughs> deal with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, as a matter of fact, when you don't um, set the proper standards... People who normally would have behaved well see others misbehaving and prospering. They join the bandwagon too. Mm-hmm. And the it's next, human nature. And mm-hmm. the next thing you know, the whole society is saying, well, boy, that's part of the course and I'm, I'm getting involved too. The next but thing you know, priests getting involved. In that, it. That's mm-hmm. good. I see the point. It, it, it appears common now 
for most. Like when you hear on the street, you listen to any young person talking, in their mind, their perception of government is, yo, we go in there to get this. Well, that, that's a sad development because when I was a young person, I mean, when I was in high school, primary school, high school, early my days in university, I never saw government officials in that way. You, you had an impression that the government officials were there trying to help us make it in the world. I mean, there were things changing. I grew up in a house when I started out. We didn't have electricity. Mm-hmm. I saw governmental action bring electricity to our street and to our house. I was there when we got our first radio. So, you know, you, 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 you see the changes and, and you, you, you ascribe it to successful public policy. Mm-hmm. I was the first person in my family to have gone to high school because in those days, high school, access to high school was a real privilege and some of us, our parents couldn't afford it even if you wanted to get it. You couldn't afford it. Mm-hmm. Now we take it for granted and you just, um, well, so the, the thing that's hurting you now you say, well, it's, it's normal, it's par for the course. And then you see the country's managers as well, why they did to look after themselves, which is not how you really want to be seen if you're a public official. No, it shouldn't be that way. I have my personal take on it, but we wouldn't share that now with respect to public officials. <laughs> I have this dream that um, all public officials should work for their five years for the people in a way where at the end of your five years, depending on your performance, we then pay you. Well, it's a but, fantasy but, of mine. Yeah, yeah, but even but even that, <laughs> even even that would hurt. But I tell you something, you know, it's unfortunate that there's this great cynicism about public officials because I, I know a lot of public officials, and most public officials are not like that. And it's like the national community on crime. It doesn't take a lot of people to label a community as bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we take our own example in Lavendil, I mean, I used to live in the Lavendil area. And I know for a fact that the vast majority of people in Lavendil are decent, law-abiding people. Yeah. It only takes a small handful to do the things that are unpleasant. And the next thing you know, the whole neighborhood gets stereotyped, get, get labeled and so on. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling kind of prophecy and that they're talk, all bad. As you're talking about crime, a lot of young people too are affected by crime. Because we look at simple things like going out. It used to be so easy where you could allow your child, like a 16-year-old just finished school, 17-year-old, they give them that first opportunity, let's say go to the club, enjoy a weekend. No parents are so scared to let their children leave the home. Yeah, because you, 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 you're not sure what the minority action might be. It's not that everybody out there is, you know, going to do harm, but somebody, some few, might do something and the frequency of that bad thing is getting worse and worse. And you then begin that out there is unsafe, out there is unpleasant, out there is unwelcoming. And then it just dampens the entire quality of life. So what um, Dr. Rowley-led government will do with respect to the crime in terms of assuring the younger population that you have a handle because that is a situation that's been out of control for a long time and they're spiraling and getting worse and getting worse and everybody come up with all kind of ideas and they have plans and if you do this and if you do that what assurances you can give today to a young person listening as though listen this is the plan that my government have in place to help curb the crime well cri- the, the response to crime is a very widespread there's not, no, there's not one thing you're going to do there's a series of things that you have to do it's, it's, we, will, we will encourage starting with we'll encourage people at the home to take responsibility for their children we'll encourage in the education system a a, a curriculum which tries to instill values in young people which are now not part of the um, effective training we will ensure that the policing of districts is better than we have now we talk about having municipal police where local policemen walk the beat. In each corporation, you have um, you have 100 additional police officers who will be like your local on-the-street corner police officers who will not just be there to prosecute you, but to work with you mm-hmm. in ensuring an improvement in your safety in the neighborhood. We will ensure that if something goes wrong, we try and find out who did it so that we can not allow that to become the norm that goes unattended. The level of crime detection is too low. So you need to pursue um, a wrongdoer if a crime takes place and try and prevent the, free, the, the reoccurrence of that. So all of these things, community policing, effective training in the police service, better resources, better management, 
starting with a manpower audit of the police service mm -hmm. and try to rebuild <laughs> that trust between the population and the police. The police is not your enemy. The police is supposed to be helping right, in the district. And we talk about district policing where somebody is in charge of the district, somebody known to you. I'm sure you don't know who's in charge of your district. No, I don't. Nope. And, and when something happens, you, you most likely will blame the minister or you'll blame the commissioner of police. Yeah. But then there's, a, there's somebody in charge of your district. Mm -hmm. Why is that person so... Behind the scenes. So, so, so absent, right? Take responsibility for the district and we get to know who's in charge of the district. And then we get to know who's doing a good job and who is not. And we get to know who we're working with and who we can talk to. And if there are wrongdoing, in the, if there are officers in the police service who are, you know, destroying that trust between the population and the service, then you deal with that. And you eventually work towards building back that trust between the population and its police service. And then, of course, the information gathering um, techniques and agencies, you ensure that they're there, properly resourced, and focusing on the right things. And all of these things, from the home to the office, and also if something goes wrong, we, we look into a situation where if you have a court matter, it should be dispensed within a reasonable period of time. This thing about, you know, you, you're, in, you're in court and 10 years, 8 years, 15 years, the matter is still going on. <laughs> we have to work towards justice on time. All of these things come together to create the society that you dream of, that you think of. <laughs> and if you don't have them, then you end up in a situation where all of us are cynical and saying, boy, you know, all fall down, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we are positive. We don't want to give the impression that, um, well, things are so bad that we just in the hell hole. No. Let's look at it from a positive standpoint. What are the problems? What are the options for solving them? Some options are immediate, some are long term. Some are you can fix something, no one stays fixed. Others you have to sustain the activity until you get to the result. Crime fighting is one of those things you have to sustain. You need to be able to sustain your initiatives over time and then you keep sustaining them. You can't say, well, okay, we fixed the crime problem in a community or in the country and then that's the end of it because other crimes will enter. You always will be required to protect your borders, to protect your streets and so on. And that's the attitude we come to government with. All right. Um, question, Mr. Rowley. Um, no, I, I, I lime around a lot of youths you know, a, a lot of youths message me on Facebook talking about the personal issues and stuff like that. I want to ask, what do you think about um, the attention from young non-voters, right? How, how do you persuade them to, like, be interested? Because the attention span for people my age is very short, right? I know a lot of people out there, young youths, who do even know when the election date is? They're not interested, <laughs> right? Because... Yet. Because there are a lot of distractions now, not only in the country, but TV and social media and all these different things. How do you get the attention of young non-voters? Well, as a political party, yeah, we try to communicate. And the election campaign is really a season of communication. And we try in a variety of ways to make that communication effective. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, I think some people are difficult to reach, and when you reach them, difficult to penetrate. But the the conversation has to be that you have an interest here to protect. Right. Your interest is involved. This election is about you. It would be quite wrong for you to think it's about them. The election is about you. Right. Politics and public policy, regardless of where you are, what you're involved in, it is the political decisions of the day that determine what your environment is. You might hear a young person say, I'm not involved in politics, politics don't concern me. But the price you pay for bread, yeah. the, the availability of a bus, medicine for your grandmother, mm -hmm. or you even buying the, the, the bling that you love, it's, <laughs> all, it's affected by the political I'm decision Yeah, making. glad you brought that up because yeah, we yeah. try to there's, tell them all the time. There's nothing in this country which is not affected or influenced by the political decision making Very true. and if the political decision making is left up to others what you're saying i will accept what the others have done yeah. but on the other hand you could say i have a thought on this i have a vote that vote really is your way um the, the constitution gives you an input to influence what is done you you're free to say i don't want to mean i give up that give up that right 
But bear in mind, there were times when people gave their lives for that opportunity to be able to participate in the process. There was a time when 18-year-olds couldn't vote. The, 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 age, of, the age of 21. Mm -hmm. The PNM brought it down to 18. Mm -hmm. There were times when women couldn't vote. Right? And there were times you had to I mean in, in my grandfather's time, um, I, mean, I wasn't around when it happened, <laughs> but just before I was born, to be able to vote, you had to be able to be the owner of a certain amount of land right. and produce a certain amount of cocoa. Only like, then could seriously? you... Oh, really? yes, sir. <laughs> you had to produce a certain amount of fanningers of cocoa to be able to vote. You couldn't, you, you couldn't just be a person and go and vote. You want to influence how the country is run and you have nothing. <laughs> 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 That's how it was. And then you had adult franchise. Yeah, where yeah. once you were an adult, morning, you were allowed morning, to vote. Morning. I mean... Oh, Lord, Dr. Rowley here. Look, look. Oh, Granny. Granny, we have, we have, we're having a serious look, conversation serious. here. Right? Oh, Lord, Dr. Rowley is I was, I was talking about you the time when you couldn't vote. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? You must have heard about the suffragettes, women who literally threw themselves in, in front of carriages. I to was one. Yeah. Yeah, so they threw myself in front of the carriage. Well, right. And I ran over my budup budup. <laughs> to be allowed to vote because it was so important that you be given that opportunity to participate. And then when the constitution is written, it's written in there. So young people should not pass up the opportunity to participate. So you all heard that. Nice. Do not pass up the opportunity for all those young listeners out there. I find all you're talking about young people. What about the old people? I just come to check to, to see if my pension goes still be in check. Well, well, we just touched on that because you were saying that whatever happens... What? You want to touch me? Whatever <laughs> happens, whatever happens, hmm? whether your pension is available or not, whether it's big or small, the political decision-making influence that. All right. I have three questions to ask you, Dr. Rowley. All right? Firstly, I want to know if Jiger is your son. <laughs> Listen, I find I'm you should put I'm it not, out there. I'm People not, have been associating outside your and Get it out there. I'm it's Jaika, your son. I'm not making those jokes because Munilal might take you seriously. Oh, no, I'm not, Munilal can't take nothing from me, boy. It's all right. So that is not your son. You're not answering the question. No well, comment no, is what no, you no. said. Uh, listen, listen, listen. We, we can I just find all you resemble have a kind of same shine of shade. I, 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 have, I have an envelope here, Shiny, right? but this, no, boy, don't pull is, out an envelope is, now, boy. This, this is, is not a good time to pull out an envelope. This is the DNA test. Who's training you, Rowley? This is the DNA test. Jager, <laughs> you're not my son. <laughs> All right, I wanted to get that out anyway. Uh, ah, hey, you what's up going crazy? Everybody on the accent. That's really your father. Yes, yes. Well, I got that clear. It's I have a next question clear. to ask you. Um, Why not? Now, I, I see I, I Sasha get a little play. You got a big play. Yeah, well, what about Go Granny? Go Rowley, go Rowley, <laughs> everybody. Go Rowley, go Rowley. No, 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 no. I ain't going to charge the, you the, much. The, the campaign is not about going. No, we the come in. The campaign is about... Come Rowley, <laughs> come Rowley, everybody. You see, I'm very adaptable. We, I could we, change my song. We, we want to bring people to the poll. Right? Yes. <laughs> well, I could. Granny I, could bring people I, to poll, you know. Yeah. Well, I have done that many a time, you I'm know. Not, I'm not even sure if you registered. Yeah, yeah I registered. Hello, I was yeah. there when Dr. Um, Eric Williams was there, you know. I I was there, I was the first voter. No, if you go in the books, you go see Granny was the first voter ever for the PNM. And we won then, so. Yes, and, mm -hmm. I, and I ain't going to be the last. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you staying in red. Hey, right. gra granny is in red here. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I have your desk. Don't worry, don't see it. Don't see it. Dr. Rowley, you see this hat? This is a PNM hat, you know. Not, not the cap, this one. Mm. Yes, this was what I first voted in. What what, what do you call a PNM hat? Yes, this is the first uh, hat. Look, if you look good, you can see that uh, Dr. Doc, Doc, Doc Williams, a little spit right there. See that? I heard he was, it? It's a dry riding. I, I, I ain't washing it. I heard he was married to a Chinese. He yes, yeah, well, well, he did track me, you know. You should know your father? No, no, he did track me. Oh, track you. Yeah, yeah Dr. Williams, did track me, boy. you. Yes, 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 but I, I like man with hair. Hey. But I like you. Oh, my gosh. You lose your hair or just drop off? I just, you know, I just... I just Nobody ever asked you about your bullet. I want to know how you lose your bullet. You shave it or you just drop off? Oh, it grows up every, every night. I just shave it in the I'm morning. trying to picture you with an afro. And a beard. And a, you had afro and a beard? I have a picture. Yeah. I want to see that picture. Look at my book, you'll see that. I have, I have a picture of myself with a beard and an afro. Oh, Lord. Well, you can't wear that now, you know. No, no, no. They go suspect you. Go check your beard and all kind of thing. I like how you clean yours. A classic man. <laughs> I like that. Anyway, I just come in to say hello and all the best and uh, make sure the wifey taking care of you. If not, she could always call granny. 
Well, no thank, granny. No, what? Thank you very much, but I have to report that I'm very well taken care of. All right, very well, you look well taken well, care of. All right, I have a little breakfast is there for you if you want, all right? Thank you very much, granny. All right, nice. Hey. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know why no, security hey. isn't security isn't all this lady. If you're just tuning in at 20 after 8 <laughs> o'clock, we're here with the Honorable Dr. Keith Rowling. Yes. He's on the breakfast party. Um, having a nice conversation with us, talking to our young listeners, giving them a little taste of what, I shouldn't say a taste, kind of putting their mind at ease. Um, we had some questions that we, we posted him at the young people want to find out and he found a nice way of exp- and I just want to add to what he was saying earlier about your responsibility in voting and just to bring mm-hmm. it down to layman terms for you young people it's very important that you go to the polls and you cast your vote regardless of because that choice is very important he said it affects you in all aspects of life he, sp- he spoke about the supermarket mm-hmm. and we could even go as basic as going out. The things that you like to wear, it determines the prices of things moving forward. You understand? And we started the conversation talking about the economy and how important that is going to affect how important it is moving forward and the stability of the economy. And he said his government is going to do all in their power with what's available to them mm-hmm. at the time to I mean, give you a stable or maintain the platform or maintain it moving forward. As we say, it's at the oil. Everybody's on the phone talking about the oil prices. Our WhatsApp is crazy. We have over two hundred messages thus far this morning, and everybody's basically talking about the same thing: mm-hmm. the oil prices, the oil prices, the oil prices. What he's going to do about the oil prices? The oil prices. And as he said, if you're now tuning in, um, that goes up and down. Yeah. Well, the, 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 let me make this clear: the oil prices, oil price, gas price. Those are things that are outside our control. We don't produce nearly enough of those products to influence the international price. Yeah. We are price takers. The big suppliers in the world determine what the price is. Right. And we sell and get what has been established. Thanks I mean, for clearing that up. Many of those mm-hmm. com- countries produce 2 million barrels a day, a million barrels a day. We produce 70,000 barrels a day. So mm-hmm. what we produce can't change or influence the yeah. price. But for us, it's enough to give us a good life. Right. But we don't. We, we can't influence the price. So when the price is falling as it is now and it's way down where it is, we have to just, you know, be careful how we handle what what little is coming to us. And now more than ever, we need good management of the country because we are not in a position to um, behave as though we are insulated from these products and their their, their market prices. And that's not the only thing. There's no there's no real reason to waste or to be corrupt, even if you have a lot. And in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a, an environment now where the market is not very pleasant, our production levels are down, and the levels of government misconduct is high. So we need to change that. Anything else you want to tell the people of Trinidad and Tobago before you leave? Well, talking to the young people, I really um, th- there's nothing that you could focus on as your area of interest which is not affected by the political development in the country. Nothing. Anything you can raise with me, mm-hmm. I can show you how it can be influenced positively or negatively by the political arena. And young people need to take responsibility. I've been campaigning now for years and saying to young people, come forward and take responsibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When young people take responsibility, the country is better off. We've invested a lot in a lot of these young people. And they need to make that investment work for the country. And you start by saying, how the country should be run and who should run it based on what you know about them. Mm-hmm. So on Monday is election day. The choice is yours to vote. Come out and vote. Make a choice. I know, I know, Make a choice. I know there's a lot of pressure on for all politicians right now to deliver and for change. But I honestly believe change starts at home. Eh? Mm-hmm. You know, once you can fix home, everything can fix. That's me. But I want to ask a question because I know a lot of youths under pressure. I, I know a lot of single moms my age People going to school, trying to balance a job. They don't have a vehicle. All these little different things. I know you, you're you under a lot of pressure right now. And Monday, you know, everything is, every, everything is going to be revealed. But how do you handle your hectic schedule and your personal life? Well, I try to, firstly, I try to keep fit. Secondly, I try to maintain a personal life, as right. you just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Because even with my public schedule, um... Yes. You, um, even with my personal schedule, a friend of mine gave me a piece of, piece of advice which has served me very, very well over mm-hmm. the years. 
And he said to me, doesn't matter how busy you are, mm -hmm. doesn't matter how pressing your job is, do budget time for recreation and relaxation. Mm -hmm. And I've done that throughout, and I think it works very well for me. It's like saying to me, doesn't matter what you work for. The same guy gave me that advice. Doesn't matter what you work for, but you must be able to save something out of it. Yeah. Because if you take away that saving from what you spend, if your income was that minus your saving amount, you would have lived. Mm -hmm. So you must always find it possible to save a little thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I budget relaxation. Sometimes I get some relaxation. Sometimes I don't. But he said to me, if you don't budget for relaxation and time with your family, then you get none. So you have to budget your money and, and budget your time, time. And to relax. <laughs> well, Dr. Rowley, thank you so much. It was such a fun morning with you. Yeah. We I, had fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Too, and I come back and see you again sometime. All right. Right now you, you want to sit down bad. Too, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I like to move around. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. You want to sit down bad. What do you want to thank you so much thank for you. joining us? Thank you.